Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and all you in between, welcome back to the Undisputed Combo Podcast! How are you doing, Colby? I'm slightly tired, but I'm pushing through. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Listen, college is starting back up in just a few weeks now. I, I tell got, you. Got the 18th. <gasps> oh, no. I said my name wrong. I actually meant Shadow Joker Broski. Hey, uh, big <laughs> shout out to uh, Dr. Chickens out there. I saw that video. Man, you had me scared to death. And I already heard through the grapevine what you're going to be doing in your next one that you're trying to get situated. I won't say a word. But if you do it, best believe I will be watching it. Front row seats, popcorn, drink. I will watch it. (laughs) That is crazy what you got coming. So I'll be there. And for a couple other shout outs, casually side decking glad to see you. easy my head can't wait for you to come back once per turn please come back and bumblebee of course last but not least skeeter that was actually a funny vid you sent me a while back <laughs> infusion ygo we gonna talk we gonna be dueling in the hospital soon trust me <laughs> and good luck to you man good luck on that tournament golden you got anybody uh, just the same ones I did last time. I want to shout out the Pokemon Squad. Just everyone go check the channel out. Really great person. And then I think we kind of covered all of our usual shout outs, have we? Skeeter, I feel like we missed you? two. We did Wait. Easy Mahe. We did Skeeter. We did Meta Bros. Hey, Meta Bros. How y'all doing? Nice pulls, by the way. <laughs> Almost forgot them. Yeah. Great. It's been a minute. Like a very decent minute. The heat's been frying my brain. Water. Yeah. Hydrate, hydrate, motivate, motivate. Oh. So what has been going on with you? Because I know you're talking to us about the uh, the Digimon stuff coming out. Oh yes. Let me just pull up my notes real quick. Everybody, it's almost time. Should be around the corner for a pre-release of BT9. And it's called X Record, or basically, I'm just going to say X Record. It might be a different way of pronunciation. But get a load of this. It's a booster set that is focused on our semi-favorite mechanic of the X Antibodies. Now, Colby, yeah, with X Antibodies, they're the main ones that sit there and say, as long as I have this on me, you cannot de-digivolve me. You cannot strip me of my resources. You cannot hit me with effects. This is the set that makes your deck have unaffected beat sticks. But Many of them. Yes. Every deck color can have an unaffected beat stick. Or, in other words, every deck can now run a rival. And it is not linked to just being a... 13,000 beat stick, it can be up to 23,000 and can attack multiple times. There are decks with different deck profiles coming out that can do it. My X antibody, however, will be I can attack you five to six times in a turn. But I have to wait until I can actually get the cards because, you know, all that moving kind of hit me a bit. So when I do it, I will have a deck profile ready to show you how to swing for the fences. And I've been I've been trying to make new decks, but uh, tuition. Yeah, stuff hits harder than puberty around here. <sighs> oh yeah, just like uh, <laughs> Digimon's now having a <clears throat> a funny where someone said that X antibody cards do not work on certain X antibody decks. When the card clearly states that as long as it says X antibody, it counts. So oh, they're, they're having a, uh, a Yu Gi Oh player syndrome, which is uh, they cannot read. Yes. And we've been over this numerous times. It counts. It counts. It counts. 
But I digress. Now, is there anything in Yu-Gi-Oh! as of late that's been having its effects kind of weirded out like that? You tell where me. It's, uh, where it's like X card does affect X card. Right. And people just go, it does not because it is not when clearly it states that it does. For the most part, not as much, but I think the latest one that I can really think of off the top of my head, or at least what I've experienced, was Arrival versus the Flunder Continuous spell, which is known as... I can actually find the name of it. I, I know the artwork. Unexpected, unexplored wins. Yeah. They're, they're like, but it, it says I can do it from any of my opponent's cards. It's not affecting the monster. No, it's still in effect. It still has that thing where it specifically says card, and so it does not count. And people, I've ran into an unaffected beat stick in Master Duel, where it was the Black Wing 3000 attack, something full armor, Master, I guess. And I tried it. When I realized that I couldn't overpower it because I had nothing stronger in my deck for it, I just surrendered. I knew I couldn't do anything. But it's the same thing, but with um, with also Monarch Stormforth. Now that one, I can at least understand why you when you read the card, you you will first believe, hey, it doesn't affect monsters. But if you you know if you actually take a deeper look and look at the rulings, then yes, Stormforth does not affect unaffected monsters because oh, it's Lord. that the effect to tribute one that you that opponent controls is still in effect. The only one that, for whatever reason, goes around it, and I don't understand why, but it's like it's the uh, the Egyptian god spell. And I forget what it's called. Sacred chant. Uh, or was it I, ancient chant? No, it wasn't ancient chant. It was like let me just look up description. This is how you know we're actually passionate about the game, folks. We will actually look up the cards. We will actually read. I can't find it, but there was a there was one spell card that basically was like, you know, summon a divine beast or essentially the Egyptian god, except that was the artwork of it. And uh, you can use monster controls as as if you control them. That one will affect unaffect monsters. At least according to what I've been hearing through, like, with the rulings. That's because it specifically says use monsters as if they're yours. So technically, you could tribute your own. But as far as it goes with just tributing them off of your opponent, no. I well, think that's how that's, the, that's similar. That's similar. No, it's just because that's how they want it. If you read Stormforth, Stormforth specifically says... If you tribute a monster for a tribute summon, you can tribute one monster your opponent controls, even though you do not control it. So mm. it could have been, it could have been that, but a wording error. I mean, it, it could have just been a ruling because they were like, because that is how it works. Here it is, soul crossing. <laughs> oh, soul crossing. I was like, I know, I know, soul was in it somewhere. Essentially, it reads tribute divine beast monster. When you do, you can tribute monster monsters to your opponent controls, even though you do not control them. So uh, that one will work against unaffected monsters. Why? Good question. That's how Konami wants it. I'm not going to argue it. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it alone. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to confirm. It's, it's, that's what I've been hearing is that people were like, well, this works. Why doesn't this work? Modern so forth doesn't work. And I'm like, yeah, that's the part what we know so far. I think it's probably just a wording ruling. Because, you know, certain cards have like, let's say, um, spiritualism. It's a spell card that you can play to take a card, a spell trap on your opponent's side of the field, put it back to the hand, but the card can't be negated. Here's why. the Because it's a tribute something performed via soul crossing, according to what the latest Q&A says. Oh. A tree stone is performed due to the effect of soul crossing, but monsters are not treated due to its effect. 
versus Soul Crossing. I mean, not Soul Crossing. It, it, whereas Stormforth, it is attributed by effect. There you go, folks. So I guess Egyptian God's going to be uh, ran in this uh, coming event. No. <laughs> I'm letting you know now, if I see an Egyptian God deck in that event, Colby, I will record it. I don't care if I win or lose. I will record it and let you see it. <laughs> and just so that you can go. I, mean, oh, I can at least why? say I can at least say the meta is diverse enough where I mean you could see a wide variety of decks. Am I gonna see a Egyptian God deck? God no. But <laughs> Let's segue into this then, and then we'll oh, get God. to the next sets. We'll just get the festival out of the way and then go on to the next Yu Gi Oh sets. The extra zero extra festival starts this Tuesday. Well, depending on when the podcast comes out, it already started. But you cannot use an extra deck and get a load of this. Pendulum monsters are free to be used. Colby, you Wonder. first. Wonder, True Draco, Dino, and uh, I'll just, even though Megal, uh, no, actually Megal got smacked a little too hard. Mm. Uh, those three decks are just having a heyday right now where it's just like th- they win. They just win. Drytron, technically, too, because they could just focus Vanity Ruler and Vanity Fiend. That's really about it. Pendulum, the only thing they have is Endymion. Now, I'm going to say five decks that if I see anyone running, I'm not going to be mad that you ran them against me. I'm going to be mad because, like, you had so many other decks to run and you ran that trash panda of a deck. First off, Dino Mist. Or as I like to call it, the Great Wall of China of Bricks. Seriously. I have played Master Duel and tried to run the Dino Mist deck as they wanted me to run it. But then it gave me the Dino Mist Zephyr Ancient whatever deck and nothing can summon itself. I'd rather play Cleeforts. By the way, Cleeforts, cool deck. Y'all can be ran. But Dino Mist? Who raised you? <laughs> Second deck that'll make me look at you like you're crazy. What was that? Um, Chord? Dore? Sulfur Chord. Sulfur Chord. If you run that deck, I'm going to be like, you just couldn't get off of Sky Strikers quick enough, could you? You missed them that badly. Okay. And then, of course, speaking of uh, <clears throat> other decks that have waifus, you know they're going to run it, Colby. What is the name of the deck? Listen, do you know how many wifey decks there are? <laughs> Come on. You know they're going to run the one. Uh, I'm trying to think of... Actually, shoot. I'm trying to think of ones that don't have an extra deck. and I can't, I can't really think of any. I don't know why. The only one that comes to mind is like Medolce. But I know that one is a extra deck used deck. It can run without its extra deck. Not that well, but it can be ran. And it's okay. <laughs> I'm going to laugh if I see someone running, Um, what was they? The flame ones. It's like flame sphinx, flame griffin. Basically, the monsters that require like one spell card to keep them active and stuff. If I see that deck there, I'm going to go, you have got to be kidding me. Oh, Crystal Beast. Oh, well, Crystal, Come Beast, on. Crystal Beast isn't that. It's more of a anytime they die, they're moved to spell and travel zone. Yeah, but think about this. They're the only ones that don't really need the extra deck. They heavily need the extra deck. Rainbow Dragon, my guy. Or well, It wasn't called Rainbow Dragon. It's the Rainbow new Dragon. fusion, but they don't really care. They can run without it. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> And the last deck, I know somebody in the background is going to run it. Gravekeepers. I smell it coming. I mean, that's actually not too bad of an option, to be honest. Yeah, you like, know there's going to be somebody doing it. They're going to either do that. Yeah, Gravekeeper or uh, Dark Magician. 
I just played Dark Magician. That was dumb. Colby, why would you, if you see Razor's effect activate to get rid of your face down, why would you activate it and it's Eternal Soul? I'm not even targeting your Dark Magician. Um, I'm hitting your Eternal Soul. Some people don't realize that if Eternal Soul is still set, it won't get its effect to destroy everything. People just don't realize it. It was a Reza. I would have not been able to capitalize on the Dark Magician play if they had uh, not activated the Eternal Soul. Because <laughs> I would still have to attack it and would have given them a free turn. So, Colby, will you be entering in this uh, festival? I haven't been playing Master Duel as of late, to be honest with you. I've been playing more of a dueling book. Let me ask the better question then. Will we see Colby entering in the Master Duel tournament? If I try to, it's because I'm going to play around with Megalith because Block Dragon's back, and uh, Megalith of Block Dragon's a little funny. Like, yes, I will make myself a... God knows how big of a beat stick, and it can only be destroyed by battle. Enjoy. Oh, Lord. I mean, you remember my Megalith video, uh, like, years ago when I posted it, dealt 22,000 damage in one strike? Yes, and people have been trying to do that. And I've seen someone get up to, like, maybe 16k, but nothing compared to what you've done. <laughs> well, this, in all fairness, that's mainly because of XC's and I went up via that way. That being said, if you really wanted to push it, you could, in theory, use Palag Effect on field to just gain so much more attack. Uh, 900 per Ritual in the Grave. So let's say, for example, you only have, like, I don't know, uh, 10 Rituals. Uh, mm -hmm. Every monster is going to gain 9,000 attack. Lord. So while it won't be one big, big beat stick, it's going to be several very big hitters. <laughs> We're but talking be... goblin attack force like clubs coming at you at once, people. But uh, then, but then again, that's only when you have 10 rituals in the graveyard. Typically, you're going to have like 20, 24 at a time with ease just because uh, full... I haven't played the deck in a minute. When I think about it, am I I'm like, am I remembering the card name correctly? Yeah. Once uh, once fools on field, uh, welcome to every card you ever need in the graveyard ever. Lord, here it comes. So in theory, if you were to get twenty in the graveyard, and let me make sure I'm actually doing this uh, math correctly. That will be a plus 18,000 attack to every ritual. <laughs> so, uh, Palag, who is usually a 2,500 beat stick, is now a 20,000 beat stick. I'm not going to even comment. However, that being said, like I said, they, uh, they hit the deck hard and they put um, Haggith and Opile to one, which kind of hurts a lot. Mainly Haggith. Well, to be honest, there is one thing that they did to Fluunderies that I was like, oh man, I got my deck together. And then I saw that this one particular card was not in the game. And I'm like, no, it was the quick play. Oh, yeah, they didn't add the quick play yet. Yeah, I'm like, no! <laughs> Granted, the deck's already going to be ran so well in Master already, because even though Maxi is here, it doesn't, Maxi just doesn't work against the deck, so many decks aren't really prepared for the Flunder coming in. Because the closest they had against it was True Draco and Eldritch, which is, here's Lightning Storm. I now proceed to OTK. I still laugh at the fact that someone used Maxi on me, and I'm just like, it's going to hand, normal summon. And I kid you not, someone actually used two Maxis in the same turn, and I'm just sitting here going, because he thought that his first Maxi got negated. 
because I normal summon do I, three. Do I need that, to bring up the time someone exceeded all the way up into Zeus just because they thought it would remove a rival? Oh no. Do I need to remind you on that? I'm just saying that that still, was funny to me. I still Think about it. Replay. I literally had nothing I was going to normal summon for. All I did was I drew, played the field spell. The next thing I know, Maxi, I'm going. Normal summon Stree. Banish Maxi. Discard Maxi. I'm like, but. <laughs> I mean, like, mine, mine, <laughs> mine was just a simple opponent makes, it goes Zodiac. Makes Barbaro, and I'm like, okay, cool, attacks uh, directly. And I'm like, okay, whatever, it's only a thousand. Uh, goes into Zeus. I'm like, why would you make Zeus still? You would probably want to focus protect your own monster. Zeus effect. Why? It won't do anything. <laughs> Printed the Zodiac player was not going to win in the slightest. I checked his deck. He didn't run a single Kaiju. So, uh, when Arrival was at a 6k attack power, it, it, he had nothing. There's nothing he could have done. <laughs> he has he had no answer. <laughs> oh, you know what? That actually does uh, bring up to our next segment. And uh, this is more of a discussion for those watching. What do you guys think of the power creep within Yu-Gi-Oh? And then I'm going to Add more to it. What do you get? Uh, Jerkins one's good for one to you as well. The power creep in Digimon, how does it compare? Right now, I think we're in a bit of a... We're trying to get different mechanics out and different type of deck styles out. So imagine Toss so, format meets a, mixes with Goat format and then we'll just throw in for added measure Link format. Like, we're going so fast but I think it's because we're running out of space. We're trying to hurry up and get into that point for, oh, for a minute there, I thought you froze. <laughs> we're trying to get into that mode where we're like other games where the power creep has gotten to that point where it's like top tier, but we're losing the fundamentals along the way. Yes, X antibody is needed because there's a lot of decks that fell by the wayside, but I'm starting to think that certain other deck mechanics and other play styles need to get some love too. Like D Brigade. I remember when it first initially came out, everybody was mm -hmm. like, ooh, it's nice. It's not that bad. It needs some love and support. But after other stuff came out, it just got pushed. Think of D Brigade as like a meme deck. Eosmon, meme deck. D Reaper will eventually become a meme deck. Right now, it's just annoying. And the one deck that was like Mystic Mine, it's actually dead. Oh. Yeah, so it something, actually died. <laughs> some, something Yu-Gi-Oh! should follow. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's trying to revive <clears throat> Lord Nightmon, but at the same time, the more they try to revive it, the more... <clears throat> yeah. It, it just won't keep up. Now, they can add other stuff in it, add some expensive cards to it, but it will not stack up because there are certain other decks that hit harder, swarm faster, and by the time you actually get the one Lord Nightmon on the field, uh, I got you. All right. Now, so it's, it's kind of in a similar boat with, uh, well, I'm not going to say similar boat. At least with EO, you can make decks playable still. Like you can still see Dark Magician, Salomon Grade, whatever the case may be, you can still somewhat see them. Don't get wrong, there's still some decks that will never see the light of day again, uh, Crawler or uh, uh, Insector, or similar. But at the same time, you can still try to revive those decks. But that being said, I think the power creep in Yu Gi Oh is getting progressively faster. And you definitely see that when you see decks like Terra Metal, Splite, and uh, there's one other. One other deck that was revealed. It wasn't. I don't think it's gonna. Say, I'm not gonna say it's on par with Splite or Tear Metal, but I'll definitely say that it's it's something that we could see play in the future. Mm. So I think I think it's just kind of like a rapid growth, and it's like 
we're here right now, then all of a sudden we're going to be going up here. All right. Hey, Colby. In Yu-Gi-Oh! Name the top five decks. Only five and one honorable mention. Top five that regardless of the format, regardless of what cards come out later, they can always find a way to still be relevant and go. Sky Striker, Dragon Link. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if I should include Source Soul and Despi because I'm, I'm trying to think of they'll always come back, but we don't have enough recorded data to say they'll keep coming back. So, In that case, you might as well do all Baz because... Yeah. No, actually, uh, Invoked. Invoked can always come back as an engine in yeah. everything. So we're, that I'm, was the case. I'm not, I'm not going to include the newer decks because off of what you said, can you always keep coming back? Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll include Invoked, Salad, because that one has been coming back. Mm-hmm. Fifth one. Well, that's actually a little tricky to think of for the fifth. Uh, I'll get, you get an honorable mention, so go ahead. I'll get Virtual World, that one. And then for the honorable mention, I'll say uh, Eldritch. All right. It's it's I, been a it, it, it's appearing somewhat but not like insanely high amount. I can give five Digimon and an honorable mention. Now, blue hybrid, that deck will not die, no matter what. As long as we still have Davis, as long as we still have Vimon, as long as we have jamming and a hexablow, we can make any blue deck work. Plus, with hybrids being a thing, any tamer can become a Digimon. So wait, I just realized, did I mention Dragon Link? Yes. Yeah, was okay, okay cool, cool. So blue hybrid. Actually, I'll just put all the hybrids in that because regardless, they can all come back. And even green hybrid is still a thing. It may not see as much consistent tournament play, but every once in a while you will see it on a list. Yeah. So there's that. X antibody, and especially with this bump now, Omimon decks will always see play. They may go by like Greymon OTK, Red OTK, doesn't matter. You will always see an Omnimon in there somewhere. Now, the fourth one, I'm just going to say it as much as I want to talk bad about it. Lilith Mon Loop will always find a way. Purple always finds a way. It got hit numerous times and it still will pop up. So, I mean, that's why that's why I mentioned Dragon Link. They lost a lot of stuff, including at one point LP, Striker to one. Uh, there was one more part to put to one. I don't want to say want to say it was Pisty. Yeah, Pisty. Yeah, Pisty's a one. Uh, Red and D Arana. <laughs> and here they are. Uh, let's just make three Omni Negates, two Monster Negates, and then rip a card out of your hand. Exactly. Very funny. Very funny. Now, my last one is going to make people look at me like. Huh? Any deck that has black reboot will always find a way. Don't shoot the messenger. You know it will always come back. I mean, it, it's one of those slow creeps, think Solomon Great, but it can find a way. It can always be consistent to find a way to get back in a tournament. Right, it's well, not I, topping right now, but still. I don't yeah. have I don't have that one, but I mean I have red reboot. <laughs> Maybe I should put on my black tie. <laughs> now, my honorable mention, and I'm going to leave it alone because I, I know a lot of people will badmouth it to this day. Yellow hybrid with anything or yellow mixed with anything can always be on there. Yes, it's one of the most expensive decks. Yeah, it's top tier. But at the same time, at a certain point, people actually move away from that deck not because it's expensive not because it wins some people see it as just easy mode they just see it as as long as i do these couple of plays i got it but i'm seeing more people run blue red green other things and leaving that in the dust now with the new stuff, EX2 and BT9 out, yeah, it's going to be a lot of X antibody and black will run wild. Will I see purple-yellow hybrid still there? A little. But 
this might be the format for black mainly because it runs x antibody like crazy so i'm putting it on honorable mention and i'm putting black on the top five list black always finds a way purple lilith loop always finds a way hybrids number one always going to find a way x antibody find a way and any deck that can splash a quick Omnimon in will always yeah. find a way. Okay. And you know, as much as I'd like to say, well, we have a couple of white decks. Yeah, they, no, no. Those are mainly just the um, in generic cards. And some of those you can splash like 15 to 50 of the same card in. No one really runs them as much. Mother D Reefer is the only deck that is like running wild. $20 you can buy the deck. But they're not using it in the regards of, oh, this best deck ever. I'm going to rock the world. They're mostly using it as, it's the flavor of the week. Some people <laughs> will still carry it on till BT10, which I'm like, I'm with you. But others are like, yeah, now it's time for me to run this deck because I like the cards. Okay. Mostly, Digimon is just a game where you run your favorite Digimon, you clean house. Anyone can actually win. I mean, that's Except how... For Lord Digimon players. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's how Yu-Gi-Oh! is now. It, it's a diverse format. You can actually see play amongst many decks. Ignister, you know, Marinta took a top somehow. Yeah, I've but heard the... about that. Yeah, I don't know how they did it, but they did it. You know, the deck's a little better now, but uh, it, you compare it with Salad and Ignister, and it's like, wow, we just do your job, but better. Oh, wow. I mean, you, you still remember the time everyone thought Marincess was going to be the new Salad and Great? I want everyone to remember that. I couldn't stop laughing. I even looked at, I even was like, look at, I, I originally thought like, wow, where it says it's going to be pretty good, but it's definitely not going to be on bar with salad. And Dora, it did decent on release. Was it near uh, salad great level? No. With that being said, uh, do we have other topics we want to bring up? Well, other, the only other topic I can think of is YCS just happened. There was another Digimon tournament that happened. Well, I'm waiting on the results from that so I can get some data. I'm just hoping Fusion YGO do good. Casually side decking. Hope you did good. Everybody else, just remember one thing. No matter what is said or done at the end of the day. Play Mister. No. Don't play Mystic Mind with Sky Strikers. People will look at you funny. Well, now they're trying to play Rune Striker, which is a whole different thing. Yeah. And if you run down on Mist, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> touch grass. But yet, touch bricks. You should be used to it. Build a log cabin. Seek grace. <laughs> Man, I gotta, I gotta play more Elden Ring. It's been a minute. Anyway. Don is a... maiden list. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I already played. I already played through it multiple times. I still got to get the last two endings, and I got. And then I one hundred percent the game. Nice. Not gonna say what the endings are. I'm gonna just say average ending and be bad ending. Anyway. <laughs> oh lord. You all have a great night. Peace out. Later. <laughs>